This is part G. Let's have a look at what they're asking us to do. Show that this particular integral over here, which hopefully you recognize that we just had a look at in part F, is equal to this other <laughs> integral over here. A bit strange that you would see all the process of integration leads you to another integral, but that's because as we have done many times in this question itself, when you do integration by parts, because of the um, relationships of the different components, yes, you get another integral on the right hand side if you started with an integral on the left. And it just depends on whether the integral you get subsequently is easier to work with than the integral you started with. And as you'll see for this question, um, it is going to be, but we have to have the later parts for that. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start by having a look at this particular um, result on the left hand side and what we can do to manipulate it to get it towards the right hand side. I've got the integral from naught to pi on two, just like a n and b n since uh, that's where we built this from uh, to begin with. There's the x squared term there. And then we've got this one minus four x squared on pi squared, all to the raised to the power of n with respect to x, okay? Now, when you have a look at a question like this, um, because you've been doing this so many times throughout this question, you might be tempted to think, oh, they're not gonna ask us to do this again, are you? But you'd be correct if you thought, I think this is gonna be another integration by parts because you've got a classic sort of setup of your product here. Just the question is, well, how am I going to divide the product up in a helpful way? When you have a look at the question, it does give you some clues, right? You can see over here, in the integrand of the new integral, we've got this power n plus one. And so if you have a think about the fact that I've got n here, well, that will neatly integrate up into the n plus one if I choose this or something like it as my dv, right? So if I'm gonna choose that as my dv, the rest of the question is, well, how do I arrange the rest of it to make the integration most straightforward? What I would say is, if we wanna make this equal to, or integrate up into this, because you've got a function of a function in here, you've got this one minus four x squared on pi squared, and that's all raised to the power of n, you're gonna need reverse chain rule to integrate this, right? So therefore, it will help us to have a think about well, what is the derivative of the inside function? Can I use that to help me arrange my u and dv, um, you know, break up my original integrand into a helpful product, okay? Now, when you're working out what the reverse chain rule will be, um, I need to think about the fact that the one is gonna, the inside derivative has a one in it, which will differentiate out to zero. But then you've got this term here, right? The minus four x squared on pi squared. Now once you differentiate this, hopefully you can see, uh, let's actually just write it, I think I can sneak it in over here. The derivative of uh, negative four x squared on pi squared, it's going to end up with, you know, that minus four on pi squared is just a coefficient that just hangs out the front, but then that two comes out and, and doubles with it, right? So you're gonna get minus eight on pi squared and then an x, right? Now, what I'd really like is it to make reverse chain rule easier for myself. Uh, I wanna see this derivative somewhere in the integrand as well, right? Now you can see the, the important part that we need is there. There's an x, right? In fact, there's not just an x, there's an x squared. So I'll borrow one of those for this reverse chain rule. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to have a minus eight on pi squared appear inside the integrand, which means on the outside, of the whole integral, uh, I'm gonna need to compensate by multiplying by the reciprocal. Think about that, right? Minus eight on pi squared, where do you see the reciprocal of that in this question? And the answer is, you can see it on the right-hand side of the result we need to prove, right? There's the pi squared on eight. So that's where it's all going to play out, okay? Hopefully that gives you a bit of a map. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write this line here as, think about this for a second, I'll leave a bit of space write that integral uh, from naught to pi on two. I'm gonna leave one of the x's aside, and then the other x is gonna attach to uh, this reverse chain rule situation here, right? So what I'm gonna have is I'm gonna multiply that by, multiply by uh, the minus eight x on pi squared that I would actually like. That'll be perfect to give us the inside derivative. So minus eight x on pi squared you can see that this x squared has split apart into these two components, but I'm gonna do this balancing act, right? If I, um, maybe I should have uh, changed the color here. If I take that minus eight and that pi squared, and then I'll make that 
a color to make it obvious, right? Uh, I'm gonna put that same thing, that's reciprocal rather, on the outside. So that's gonna give me uh, minus pi squared on eight. So I actually haven't really changed the question, just dressed it up a little differently, right? And then you'll have the rest of the integral. So that's all of this, which I have not changed, over there, on the right hand side, okay? We're ready to go, I'm set up. I've got my u and my, uh, my dv uh, appropriately chosen, so let's just do them one step at a time. If my u is equal to x, that means that my du on dx is simply going to be one, so that's nice. And then when I think about my dv on dx, I'm gonna say, well, hold on a second, that is this long awkward thing that I've written on the end here, right? It's awkward, but it's in exactly the form that I need it. If it is indeed equal to this, Am I gonna cat? I think I'm gonna miss the end there. That's okay. I've got an extra thing on the side. Okay, that's all equal um, to dv on dx. Let's keep that nice and consistent. There we go. Then when I integrate up, because that, you know, sort of the, this is the f dash, and this is the f of x that's raised to the power of n, all I need to do is to increase the power by one and then divide by the new power. And then when I divide by the inside derivative, that's right there, it just kind of cancels out. So therefore, over here, um, what did I just say? I'm going to work out v and I first increase the power by one, so that's gonna give me uh, I'll leave a bit of space, uh, one minus four x squared on pi squared all to the n plus one, which is comforting, because look, that's what I wanted right there. But then I also need to divide by n plus one, which is also um, encouraging, because look, there it is, there's the n plus one, it's supposed to appear. So I'm gonna go one on n plus one, like so. All right, excellent, I've got all my pieces, so let's um, use this to just continue our working underneath and incorporate all the bits and pieces from our integration by parts. I'm gonna say, this is equal to, uh, I've still got this minus pi squared on eight hanging out the front, and it's gonna multiply by everything that you're about to see, so I'll just write some really big braces there. And then comes the um, uv from naught to pi on two, right? So let's see, what are we gonna get here? Well, I've got the, uh, x, right? Um, you can see that's come in from, from here, and then uh, my v is all here. So if I just grab that, here we go. Duplicate that right there, so I've got a multiplication, okay? And that's gonna go from naught to pi on two, so I'm just gonna leave that uh, integral there briefly, and then I've gotta subtract the integral from naught to pi on two of v du. So um, this is nice because it's kind of exactly sort of what I want over here. This is the part that looks convenient. So um, my v du is going to be um, just this. This is v and my du is just one. So I don't really need to worry about it very much. Okay. And that's all with respect to x. Okay. Um, don't forget, uh, we multiplied the minus pi squared on eight with the whole thing. So I finally got the whole thing. So I'll close my curly braces. All right, now uh, let's look at this mess. Okay, now when we evaluate uh, the lower boundary, right, that's nice, this x is just gonna become zero, so don't need to worry about that. The pi on two is a little trickier, isn't it? When you evaluate the upper boundary, the key term is gonna be in here, because that's the only other place that x appears in this definite integral uh, in the primitive function, right? Um, this is probably worth noting down, so I'm gonna say when x equals pi on two, what happens to this particular term inside the brackets? Well, you get one minus four times pi on two, there's the substitution, uh, all divided by pi squared, right? So um, what that tells me is that I can say one minus, okay, look at it carefully, right? You've got a pi squared on the numerator, pi squared, and then a pi squared on the denominator. So they're gonna go cancel, cancel. And then on the numerator, you've got four times a half squared. So they're also going to cancel, cancel, cancel. Um, so you're actually going to get, you know, in terms of canceling for multiplication, you're just going to get one over one. So this is going to give you zero, just like the lower boundary did, right? So you've seen it enough times, you're like, okay, uh, I'm getting the hint, right? I'm going to get um, this term is no longer worrying about multiplying by this. It's just going to multiply by this integral along the end. Do take note, there's a minus sign right here, minus sign right there, so therefore I'm not gonna write a minus sign out the front. What do you get left with? The pi squared, is still there on the top, 
You've got the eight that's hanging out the front, the n plus one that's inside this integral over here, and then everything else comes along, which is actually the result I wanted to prove, right? It's the integral from naught to pi on two of uh, one minus four x squared on pi squared, uh, all to the power of n plus one, dx. So we achieved our goal. You rem might remember in our original integral we had an x squared there, right? And what we've sort of done, as it were, is get that x squared inside there, which is why, see, there's like an x squared here. How many x squareds were inside the brackets before? There were n of them. Well, now when you put one more in, how many do you expect? Answer, well, one more. That's why there's an n plus one, and that is part j.